I'm here with my friend, Mrs. Limelight, or you might know her as Hydrangea Limelight. One of the questions I see asked more than almost any other is why do my hydrangea not flower? Now, I think you'll agree, this is a pretty good showing this year. So I know something about blooming hydrangeas. And in this video, I'm going to tell you all about that and answer all of your questions. Unfortunately, you want a simple answer and I'd like to give you a simple answer, but there isn't a simple answer for this. In fact, I find that a lot of the stuff on the internet, particularly in social media, just doesn't make any sense. People ask the question, why do my hydrangea not flower? And someone will answer, well, you haven't given it enough sun. Somebody else says, well, they need shade. Didn't you know this is a hydrangea and needs lots of water? All of those answers may be correct, but we don't know if they're correct, and here's why. They simply called them all hydrangeas. There are several different kinds of hydrangea, and they all grow differently, and they grow differently in different climatic zones. When someone tells you how to grow a hydrangea and doesn't tell you the type or the cultivar name, the information is pretty much useless. So step one in answering this is you have to know what type you have. Now by type, I'm not talking about limelight. That's the cultivar name of this plant. And by the way, limelight is a fantastic plant. And I really like this one. But limelight is the cultivar name. The type is a paniculata. It's hydrangea paniculata limelight. You have to know that paniculata name. Now you might know the blue hydrangea, which everybody goes crazy over. And those aren't paniculatas, they're macrophyllus. And paniculatas and macrophyllus, world of difference. To help you identify your plant, I've made a separate video that goes through a series of steps so you can take any hydrangea in your garden and identify it correctly. And maybe you should go and view that video and then come back to this one. This will make more sense if you know the type of your hydrangea. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. Let's first review the various types of hydrangea. Probably the most popular one is the microphylla. It's also known as the mop head, the big leaf, and the lace cap. Now these aren't exactly the same, but most people put them in the same category. Then we have the quercifolia, or the oak leaf hydrangea. The paniculata. A lot of people call this the PG hydrangea, but that name is wrong. PG is a cultivar. It is a paniculata, but it's only one cultivar. It is incorrect to use that term to refer to all of the cultivars. Now when they're pruned into a tree form, a lot of people call this the tree hydrangea. The next one is the arborescent. This is also known as the Annabelle or the smooth hydrangea. Again, Annabelle is not a good name for this hydrangea because that refers to a particular cultivar of arborescent, but it is very common on social media. One that's not well known is Serrata. And the common name for that is the mountain hydrangea. And last we have Petiolaris, the climbing hydrangea. All right, so why doesn't your hydrangea flower? Well, the first thing to look at is fertilizer. I see a lot of people recommending a bloom booster type fertilizer. That's a fertilizer with a high middle number. That's the MPK number and the middle is the phosphate. And people think that a lot of phosphate will make your flowers bloom. That's really a myth. Every part of a plant needs phosphate to grow. The leaves, the roots, the stems, the flowers, they all need phosphate. Flowers don't need any more phosphate than the rest of the plant. Bloom boosters do not work. Adding a whole bunch of phosphate to your soil is not going to make your plant bloom, except in one rare case. If your soil is deficient in phosphate, then adding some will make the plant grow better. But if your plant is growing well and not flowering, it's probably not a phosphate issue. Now, it could be that you've added too much nitrogen. Have you put on a lot of manure, a lot of compost, or a lot of synthetic nitrogen? Too much nitrogen grows lots of leaves and less flowers. So that could be a problem. But fertilizer is usually not the issue, provided your plant is growing properly. The other reason your plant may not be flowering is that is too small. These are shrubs and they need to be a certain size before they flower. 
you probably went to the nursery and bought a plant that was in flower. You put it in the ground and this is its second year and it didn't flower and you're wondering, hey, it's supposed to flower, it's big enough. Well, maybe not. Remember, a lot of those plants in nurseries are grown in warmer climates and they're force fed to make them bloom so that you buy them. Now you come home, put them in different soil, different climate, and they just grow slower. They take a couple years to get adjusted. So if this is the first year with your plant and it's quite small, don't worry about it. It's probably just not big enough. Give it another couple years. You may not have a problem to solve. Now, once the plant is a good size and is growing lots of leaves and it doesn't flower, then it's a different problem. Let's talk about watering, hydrangea. Notice the hydra in there. There's a very common myth about hydrangea, and that is that they were called that because they need lots of water all the time. That's a complete myth. The best I can figure out is the hydra is actually the name of the shape of the seed pot. It has nothing to do with water. Hydrangeas do not need to be watered any more than any other plant in your garden. Now, if it's a new plant, give it a little extra water that first year, just like every other plant. Once it's established, treat it just like all the others. They don't need more water. In fact, too much water could be rotting your roots. And if it doesn't have roots, it can't make flower. It needs a good root system. So how do you know when to water? It's really simple. You can watch one of my other videos or simply take your finger and stick it in the soil. If it's wet, don't water. If it's dry, water. So watering should not be an issue on hydrangeas. The next reason why your hydrangea might not be flowering is that it's not getting enough light. I see a lot of comments online that say hydrangea want a part shade garden. That's not necessarily true. So first of all, you have to know the type of hydrangea you have. Different hydrangeas want different amounts of light and you can't treat them all the same. The second thing that's critical in this discussion is your climate. So let's take the macrophyllas, those blue hydrangeas, which are very popular. If you're growing those in a warm climate, they probably need some shade. In fact, they prefer part shade in that condition. Full sun in Atlanta, Georgia is just too bright for those plants. On the other hand, you take that same plant and move it up here into my zone five garden and I can give it full sun and it's not bothered. Now that's true of many plants. Colder climates can give their plants more sun than warmer climates, but it's particularly true of hydrangea. Now the oak leaf hydrangea actually likes quite a bit of shade. And even in zone five, it prefers heart shade. Macrophyllas, on the other hand, zones five and six can give them full sun, but as you get to warmer climates, start giving a little bit more shade. They'll be happier there. Climbing hydrangea also like part shade. And in a cold climate like zone five, they will grow in full sun, but I actually give them sort of part shade and they seem to do quite well there. When it comes to the smooth hydrangea, the arborescence, or the paniculata, you can give those full sun pretty much everywhere, provided they get enough moisture. So if you're in a really hot climate, you're growing in Florida, and watering is an issue, well, you might want to give them some part shade. But most of the time, they do just fine in full sun, particularly the paniculata. Arborescence, they have those big floppy leaves and they really suffer in midday in the middle of summer. So a little shade in the hot climates is probably good for them. If you don't give your plants enough sun, they will either not flower or just flower poorly. If you put your plant in the wrong spot and you're not getting flowers, try moving it to more light. That just may solve the problem. One of the most common reasons hydrangea are not flowering is because you've pruned it incorrectly. Now don't get scared, pruning is actually pretty easy with hydrangeas, but you do have to know when to prune. So the paniculata like this one and the aborescens, the smooth hydrangea, they make buds on new wood. So in spring, they don't have flower buds yet. They wait until late spring before making those buds. So the best time to prune them is late winter and early spring. If you do it then, you won't cut off any buds. And if you don't cut off the buds, this is what you get. All of the other hydrangeas, they make buds on old wood. So right now it's the middle of August. 
those plants are already making buds on those stems and those will flower next spring. If you come along in late winter or early spring and do your pruning, you're cutting off all the flower buds. And then you wonder, why is my plant not flowering? Well, you prune it at the wrong time. So all those other hydrangeas need to be pruned after they flower. If you haven't been doing that, that's a very likely reason why your plants are not blooming. I do have a video to show you how I prune the paniculatus, which is this one here. And in fact, I use this particular shrub. It gets pruned every spring just to keep it smaller. The other big reason why you don't get flowers is winter kill. Now this won't apply if you're growing in warm climates, but if you're in colder climates, particularly zones five and six and colder, winter kill is a real problem. I just told you that some of the hydrangeas make buds in the fall and those have to overwinter so they can open in the spring. If the buds get killed in the winter because it's too cold, you won't have flower. This is a really big problem with the macrophyllus. Around here, I can go out in spring and buy these beautiful blue-headed flowers in pots. And everyone goes to the nursery and buys these and brings them home, puts them in their garden, and they're so excited and they're there for a few months. They're overwintered and they come back next spring and the plants are there. The plants are fully hardy in zone five, but no flowers. The reason is the buds got killed. So that person maybe tries to fertilize, water a little more, do the things I've suggested. The next year, no flowers. Year after that, no flowers. Then they get on social media and say, what's going on? And that's when Pavlis gets on there and he says, you bought the wrong hydrangea. Now it's not your fault. It's the fault of the nursery industry. I'm in zone five and I can buy lots of macrophyllas around here. None of them will bloom in the spring. And believe me, I've tried. I've tried some that are ever blooming. I've tried endless summer, which is supposed to make buds on both new wood and old wood. I don't get buds either time. Zone five, don't use macrophyllas. They don't bloom reliably. Zone six, maybe. If you're a warm zone six, you might have luck with them. If you're a colder zone six, forget it. So if you're in one of those zones and you're growing macrophyllus and they're not blooming, the solution is really simple. Get out your shovel and throw them away. The nursery who sold them to you shouldn't have. They are rated zone five and some of them are even rated for zone four and they are hardy. They come back year after year. That root system is hardy in those zones. The flower buds are not. So stay away from those. Buy paniculatas that are so easy to grow and you don't have to worry about winter kill. The other hydrangea that is a bit of a problem is the oak leaf hydrangea. It's also hardy in my zone, but I only get flowers maybe every second year and I grow it in a very sheltered spot. So if we have a mild winter, the buds make it through and I get flowers. But as I said, 50% of the time, I get no flowers. Now at least that plant has a really nice fall display when it makes those red leaves. So I do keep one around, but I don't count on it for flowers. Now the other hydrangeas that I haven't mentioned, they're mostly bud hardy in zone five. So let's summarize this. If your hydrangea is not flowering and it is hardy where you grow, and I mean bud hardy, Try giving it more sun, a little less nitrogen, and maybe fertilize a little bit. But it's unlikely the fertilizer will make much of a difference if the plant's growing well. If that's not working for you, go back and make sure you've identified the right type of plant. And the last thing to do, if it still doesn't flower, get rid of it. There are so many plants that grow well. Where I'm standing here, I can see five different paniculata types they're all flowering, they flower every year, and I don't do anything. That one over there is quick fire, and it grows in part shade, does fine. One over here, full sun, does fine. The two over here, full sun, no problem. None of these get watered, by the way. They don't need extra water. I water very little in these gardens, and I never fertilize. These are tough plants, easy to flower. So have fun with your hydrangea and stop getting frustrated with plants that don't work for you. Get rid of them and replace them with something that does. Get yourself a limelight. And by the way, if you think this is too big for your garden, and it probably isn't, you need big shrubs in a small garden. But if you think it's too big, there's also a little limelight available. And it only grows about four feet tall, just as good as this one. Well, 
is not as big as this one, so I think this one's better. But it does flower easily. Till next time, have fun in the garden.